So G will be a split reductive group of uh, so, uh, local non-alchemian fields. Uh, and uh, so all in this, uh, the ring of integers. Um, so as usual, H, the Hecker algebra is algebra of function, compact support, um, uh, compact support which, uh, which invariant on the left, on the right, by the action of GO on G of F. So uh, this is known to be uh, a commutative algebra, um, and it is uh, a satake isomorphism. I can identify it with uh, uh, the algebra of, of the dual groups. So G hat is, is complex dual. Reductive group. So, uh, if pi is um, an irreducible uh, unramified representation, so That means uh, pi has a vector, non-zero vector fixed under the action of G of O. Then uh, we know that H acts by convolution product on this vector space, which can be one-dimensional. And this um, isomorphism, static isomorphism, uh, and so this pi will correspond to some sigma, uh, some uh, some simple conjugacy class. In G hat. Um, and the, the isomorphism has been met in such a way that uh, uh, for every phi, in H, yeah, the trace of uh, on pi of phi. So the trace makes sense because phi uh, as a Hecker function will project the, the, this infinite dimensional space on this one dimensional vector space. We can take the trace. So this is going to be a phi check of sigma. So this, is, so now you command your break function. Uh, which can be uh, evaluated on the sigma, on the conjugacy class. OK. So now you can um, try to do uh, something uh, a little bit different. So instead of looking at uh, a regular function in G hat, you can look at some interesting uh, rational functions. So, the, uh, the, so, so if let's sigma irreducible algebraic representation of the dual group, um, then um, one can, uh, following Langlands, one can define the L functions, L factors. So it depends on the complex parameter S, rho, and pi. So we're really about pi, but uh, we have auxiliary parameters S and rho. Uh, is determinant of one minus sigma, rho sigma and q to the minus s minus 1, where q is the cardinal of, of the residue field of the local fields. So this, so this is, uh, let me just denote this by uh, the, the given name. 
this become a function from sigma map to psi tinder s of sigma. And now psi tinder s can be uh, regarded as a rational function on g hat, which is equivalent, which is uh, invariant in the adjoint action, and depending on one parameter s. So one may ask the question of whether one can construct the function. So now psi belong to a localization of, of, of the algebra on the right. So one can ask, uh, so this psi s, one can ask, is there any psi s on the localization left-hand side that would correspond to this from on the right-hand side, right? So for doing that, you can first uh, uh, expand in a, a single-minded way. Uh, simple minded way. So this write a simple sim sum from zero to infinity of uh, trace of sim n of rho sigma q to the minus n s. And now uh, this let me call this thing psi of n, right? So now psi n is a regular function. And you know it has uh, inverse other catcher and forms. And so we can, of course, do left psi s to be this, this infinite sum, at least formally, of psi. This, let me put this psi tinder n to be consistent. And this becomes psi n q to the minus s. Right? And we don't know how to make sense of this yet, but this presumably you can have so that transform this psi tinder s. Uh, which had to do with the local L factors. <coughs> okay, so it is not difficult to prove that um, uh, when the real property of S is large enough, uh, this series is going to be to convert. Uh, I'm going to make sense of it for large S. But somehow I would like to um, put oneself in a situation when uh, it just makes sense obviously for any S. So in particular, uh, in some looking for situation where the function psi, you want to sum psi n. Makes sense by itself. Don't need to make any kind of limit. So this situation actually has been devised by uh, Bravagman and Kashdan. This is a razor. So let me uh, define this brother man and cash that. Setting. So um, uh, we are going to put ourselves in the situation as follows. So G will be an extension by, by of GM by let's say semi simple group. This is not important, but it just assume this is semi simple. So that it looks like GN lab. So instead of, um, of, of doing this, you can just look at this function and twist the representation by determinant. Right? So what we're looking for is the following formula. Trace of psi s on pi is the same as trace of psi on pi tensor with determinant to the s. So, for this to be true, one the uh, you want to have the in the do one side in this exact sequence, and uh, actually we want that the when you have this condition that if you do uh, you look at the row row of um, 
Gn V rho. Uh, so the the Bauman Cousin condition is if you rush rho to the center on Gm, it becomes the identical map from Gm central in G head to the Gm central in Gnv. So so the condition is rho rush to Gm is identity on Gm. So I had to make sense of that, but that's easy to understand what it means. So of course, uh, if this is to be the case, then uh, when you put C man, C man rho, then uh, and that restrict it to Gm, then you get the elevation to the nth power of Gm, right? And with this situation, with this condition, it imply that the, the psi n, psi n whose Sadeka transform is the trace on the symmet n symmetric power uh, is supported by uh, support of psi n is included in the matrix G in G of f such that the valuation of determinant of G is equal to n. So obviously have a, this one support. So they will be have no trouble to, to make the sum of them. And then makes sense as function on on G of F. So which can be obviously left and right invariant by the maximum compact, but which is not compact supported. Okay, so um, uh, that would be um, uh, the, um, the main topic should be try to understand this function, psi, um, geometrically, and also you understand attempt to use it in trace formula. So that uh, the main log, um, motto is going to put this function as test function in trace formula. Uh, so that I go to back to that later. So first of all, let's just uh, come back to this. I mean, historically, this function is look very familiar because when G is is G and D, and rho is the standard representation of the dual groups, then psi <coughs> is the characteristic function of, of G and D f cap with the matrix of D of O. So it's basically just the Cartesian function of integral matrix. So, um, and this is the, 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 all the, the single case where the function is simple. There's been another case that has been calculated um, classically, uh, had to do with GSP, and maybe wrote some standard representation. That was calculated by Satake, and that had been reported in in the book of MacDonald. In the MacDonald book, there's, there's, he calculated two examples. But I understand Kasseman told me that in, uh, there is some mistake in the calculation. In, I mean, had to to put some factors. But you, uh, yeah, in, in this case, in the book of MacDonald, it's just cut this of something, but that is wrong. Had to multiply by another factor. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, the first point I'd like to mention is, uh, in general, you would like to understand what would play the role of this space of matrix, right? To construct this space. So, is there uh, for each row, a space that could be matrix, that's a yes, yes. It's, uh, there, is, there is a monoid. So uh, uh, there is a monoid. 
associated with rho. So this can be constructed within the uh, Winberg theory of monoid. So here I should mention that the theory of algebraic monoid was not started by Winberg, it was started by, uh, uh, by people like Renner and Pucha. Uh, and also, it can be um, generalized quite fastly. This is the so so theory of spherical varieties. I think that had to do with, it's on, on had to do with L functions, uh, ultimately. But I think we do not understand the whole thing yet. But let uh, let uh, look at this case. Um, and but the 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 the, the thing I want to use is the theorem due to Winberg. Okay, so um, in this uh, theory, somehow it's convenient to not to fix G, but to fix G prime and let G uh, va vary. So we fix some is simple and for simply, some simply connected G prime, and you look at. Uh, and look, uh, consider all couples uh, of G and M, where so G is above, no, no, G is an extension of the torus by the fixed G prime, and M is, is an equivalent embedding, is a, a normal. A phi equivalent embedding of G. And that means the action on the left, on the right of G on itself can be extended to M. And under the assumption, this actually equivalent to the M is an algebraic monoid. So the, the left and right action can be extended to multiplication on M. What is T? T is a torus, some torus. Oh, here is split, yeah. Um, I think if the group, it, if it starts up, it's not, not split, maybe you had to, uh, to look at non-split torus. But there should not be any problem. Yeah. <coughs> but G is not necessarily split. G no, here G is split. I assume G is split. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But this can be made. That, G, prime. G prime is split. Yeah. Here it is everything is split, but I think that can be generalized to non split situation. <coughs> okay. So. Um, so there is something uh, technical but important is uh, uh, what Winberg called the uh, abelianization. Uh, so we look at uh, this map G, no, bit, yeah, so bit M into A. A is, uh, is so let the K be some base fin. No. So the regular function on M which is invariant on the left and on the right by the semi-simple group. <coughs> we have this map, and uh, the monoid is going to be f very flat. If this abelianization if is, is flat with a geometric, which reduce geometric fiber. And we restrict ourselves into this setting to assume this, you only look at this monoid uh, for which abelianization is uh, very flat. And in this case, uh, Winberg proved that there is, a, uh, there is a universal monoid. Okay. 
So we think that in Gn dk the universal should be the matrix. It's not true. It's more complicated. For Gn2, it's just a matrix. But in general, it's more complicated. It's related to the wonderful compartification of the semi-simple group, for example. And the, the, I think the important point is when you, uh, when I, after I recall the construction of Wienberg construction of universal monoid, it will be clear that it had, had to do with the Hecker algebra. Okay. So uh, construction. Sorry? You said K is a field? K is, is a field, it can be F. If, yeah, it can, K is some base field. Base field when you define your group. So when you say flat, it's flat or well? No, this map is flat. That is map. It's map from M to A, yeah. So actually A is a toric variety, right? When you, A have action of the T. And it can be proved as a fine toric variety. So some of the monoid, the, uh, the combinatorics of, of this gadget is, is kind of uh, mixed between the combinatoric of root system of G prime and combinatoric varieties. There's some kind of tricky uh, combinatorics. Uh, <coughs> okay, so, uh, so let me construct one of these monoid and some of the, the, the universal one. Uh, so let T prime be the maximum torus of G prime and Z prime the center of G prime and uh, you can put G plus to be uh, G prime time T prime mod Z prime act, acting uh, diagonally. And so, uh, and then we have this eight sequence to Z plus, to T plus, to zero, where T plus is now is T prime mod Z prime, and this becomes the torus of the adjoint groups, and it is uh, GM to the R, and this map is given by uh, the simple root. So, you fix Boren, then you have simple roots that uh, identify the maximum torus of adjoint group with the product of GM. And so, of course, this uh, you have alpha, alpha i extend to G plus. Now you have the rho i. So let omega one, omega r, be the fundamental weight of G prime. Uh, and then we have this uh, fundamental representation of G prime going to G L V I of uh, highest weight uh, omega i. Um, and you want to extend this rho i uh, over G plus. And um, I mean, I had to try. And the, 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 unique f the only one way to do it is to write this formula. Uh, it looks complicated, maybe because I, I didn't choose the right normalization, but uh, when you try, it's the only formula you can write. So that is factorized to set the center. Okay. So, uh, so let's call this alpha plus, and this is rho plus, and then you have this alpha plus, rho plus, from G plus to the product of, of Gm, and product of Gn Vi, which can obviously embedded into some this obvious monoid. Matrices. And so Gm plus is defined to be uh, the closure. So this, this is uh, an embedding, and this is the closure of G plus. 
Uh, I mean, in small characteristics, it may happen that M plus is not normal, in which case you want to normalize it. But this, this is not, a, I think, not very important issue. And uh, um, so what Winberg proof is, uh, um, this is universal in the sense that um, for every flat monoid, it can be obtained by base change from G plus and M plus. So that means you have. Uh, for so just look at M, so we have M plus going to A plus. So this is acting on, acted on by T plus. And if you want to construct uh, another monoid, you just look at some T, uh, some uh, character, some homeomorphism T from T to T plus. That can be extended in a morphic toric variety from A to A plus, then you base change. And that is the recipe to construct any monoid. OK. So now um, I want to take one minute to explain why this has anything to do with, uh, with the um, Heike algebra and Cartan decompositions. It clearly has something to do, because if you want that, for example, if you want G, to be in a K, P, lambda K, maybe, uh, I mean, it's easier to, to write condition for if you want to look at the union of, for on lambda prime less than lambda by the even dominant order. You want to write this condition. Uh, and obviously, you have to use on this. Uh, fundamental weight representation to, to write down. Like the K of G and then to write only minus, right? And now, uh, if you want to write precisely, what you really want is uh, that uh, rho plus of, you just put this to the T, pi lambda and G is actually in the M plus of O. Right, so this condition become a condition that something become integral point. So the monoid is just basically that what is, is how it, it be used. The condition quite complicated some double coset can be expressed. I mean geometrically as integral point. Okay. So then that has clearly to do with uh, with. Um, uh, I can jabras. No, now let come come back to the uh, L function. So L function is basically to do with the fact that we want this to be G A and this to be G A. Right. So just look at the more. I mean, in L function, there is this S. So it corresponds to some G M. And so you want to put G M here, and so I want to put A one here. And just see that GM, uh, this has to be um, not just a, a, a co characters of T plus. And the further extend to A1, it just means the dominant. So this is some, some lambda uh, dominant co character. And uh, it's quite obviously which one you want to choose. You have to choose this one to be the highest weight. Of row. So when you start with a representative dual group, it has a, a highest weight. So you just plug it in this uh, Winberg construction, you get a monoid. 
and that is the module we want. And this actually is a, this mode, so we let call this M row, M row. So then it become M row. And this has been uh, constructed in paper by Braverman and cash down. So by what I just explained a little bit before, uh, we see that the, the function psi is sum of psi m. Uh, so ps the, the support of psi is very, by basic by this equivalence, is easy to check up support of psi is exactly the, uh, uh, or it's, at least it can contain, I mean more or less equal, equals, uh, is g of f, cap is m, rho of o. So the support of this function, each of the integral point of some model. This is Cartesian, yes, by construction. Okay. Now, when you have this monoid, uh, you can ask uh, what, well, we have the support, what is the function, right? So that is, this is the function is complicated. I mean, numerically, you know, this is quite, quite something very complicated because you have to do symmetric power and then have to decompose symmetric power. So this is kind of complicated business. Uh, well, I mean, naively, you want to, when you have complicated function, you want to be to the perfect shift. Right? So, so I put some, I, I put some kind of conjecture that uh, let uh, L plus of M rho to be the jet space of M rho. So it's defined by the fact that point on this is the point is value in the formal series on M and uh, one can one can I mean ask if you check the IC of this on M plus M well, this can be defined, but I, I mean, I, I mean, I, um, there's some paper literatures by uh, by Kashdan and 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 and, and Green, Kashdan and Greenberg, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a two papers: the paper by Greenberg and Kashdan, and there's also a paper by Drenfeld. Okay. With a different proof of the same thing. Yes. Yeah, so it proved that this uh, just space, I mean, locally. Uh, is a product of some defined dimensional type with formal distribution. Uh, so at least that it is locally. So whether uh, lo formally locally, so it's, formal locally. Yes, yeah, so it's true that every formal neighborhood is a product of something finite dimensional and an infinite dimensional. But that at least at the end of the standard it doesn't prove that this actually exists, right? I mean. Well, at least on the level of stocks, I'm not sure that it's. This is. The, the stock is okay. Yes, the function you can define. Yeah. And, and actually, this conjecture, I think, is also known. Okay. Okay. At least, okay, so uh, maybe this is known, so, but this, uh, I see the function, the trace of forbearance is, uh, is psi. Okay. So at least, I mean, I don't really understand this local uh, space, but um, I'm... Uh, Sorry, what, what is I see? Excuse me, what, what is I, I see? Uh, well, it's not clear to me yet, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll explain you some, something that I do have the I, I, I see now. It's I see of this... Uh, I see of this M um, L plus M. Okay. Are happy, Takeshi? <laughs> okay, so now let's look at some global model of this. Okay, so now let's see the, um, 
a smooth projective curve of a finite field. And um, uh, so, so now let E and E prime be uh, principal G bandons on C. So what I can call what is um, amorphism. So phi from e, just notation on M, e, e prime M, will be nothing but um, a section, a global section of M and twist on the left by E and twist on the right by E prime, right? Look at the thing of a vector bundle, it's exactly the map, a linear map vector bundle. So for, if you are given yourself monoid, you can define also the M morphisms, right? Yeah. G bundle, not G prime, G? G bundles, yeah. You can, M have two axes on the left and the right, you can twist it. And you can compose it also because it's a monoid. So you can compose. And also we should look at um, um, M, look at phi such that generically phi lands in G. That means uh, generically it's an isomorphism of bundles. Then you, what, uh, I mean, obvious global uh, analog of, of this uh, loop space is uh, the space of a pair of E and phi, where um, E is rebundled on C. And phi is a M map from E naught to E. So it's generically an isomorphism. Sorry? E naught is the trivial bundle. E naught is the trivial bundle, yes. Right. And this have an a morphism to, by abelianization, this has obvious map to um, uh, the same thing for, for G, E, G, M, and, and for A. So what we get here is to the space of a pair of, so this map to the space of okay, a pair of, uh, of L and um, of, um, yes, of L and maybe alpha. Where L is a lie bundle, and alpha is a global section of L. Over the curve, yes. So this is basically just union, not zero, of semen, uh, sim. Uh, effective divisors on, on the curve. Okay. So of, and so uh, so let me call this C N. And so X also be decomposed into the uh, union of X N, which is actually mapped to C N. And uh, I mean, this concept is very standard, I think, in the, in the case of um, G equal to G and LAN and phi the children representation. It is on, on uh, Gerard's very first paper on geometric LAN lens. It is a space he considers. <coughs> and so uh, with this, uh, it's really not difficult to prove that the, uh, uh, the IC of this space, this global space of um, uh, so, okay, so I, so if D belongs to CN, so D is a sum of DI, um, CI, 
the CIR point and DI is a multiplicity, and then um, you want to restrict the IC of X to the fibers over D. So I can call this map to three system name app. So app minus one of D is, um, in order to be a, a, a CMDI of some perverse shift A lambda. So A lambda is, is, is a perverse shift corresponding to representations. And that would be corresponding to DI1 to 1. And then you point collect, it gets symmetric powers. So this map, um, so this, this fact is, I mean, the proof can be proven by the same proof in this Lomo paper. Um, uh, so give this function. But somehow, I mean, uh, for, I mean, Maybe it's it totally <laughs> stupid, but I think the, 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 the kind of interesting point is if you, even if you cannot define, I mean, I don't know how to define the, the, the IC uh, on the jet locally. Uh, this look like a local, and that means you can uh, obviously map X to, uh, X can be mapped locally. To M of O, V, mod, uh, mod G O V. And it's stuck if you like to. So they click on this C. And so uh, you see that the trace of Hobbianus on the IC of X is the pullback of the product function of psi, psi V locally. So that is kind of, uh, at least for me, an indication that uh, there should be the IC that makes sense, and this is psi V local. This map is, is not really smooth, no change to be smooth, but it kind of yeah, but it is formally smooth if you if you consider the divisor which is concentrated at one point. Yes. Then in the in the neighborhood of that divisor, this map is formally smooth. I see. Which is easy to prove. And so th this is actually so this is why I said that this conjecture is known because this global statement is really easy and it kind of implies that local conjecture immediately be because if it's easy to prove this map is, is formally smooth. I mean, it's not formally smooth as a map from all of X to this thing, but in the neighborhood of points which are concentrated, devices which are concentrated at one point, it is formally smooth. Okay. <coughs> okay, so, um, well, uh, so this function uh, seems to have, uh, it has um, a nice uh, geometric interpretations. Um, so uh, there is um, what you really want to do with these functions. <coughs> okay, so let me do it. So there is the uh, actual endoscopy proposal of a plane lens. Um, so let now uh, automorphic representation pi to be product of pi v uh, in um, uh, a discrete representation is automorphic uh, space. So here you can have the two choice, either you can fix the centron character or it's fit in an Eden. I think it's going to fit in Eden somewhere. So just to make this space have uh, finite volumes. Um, so assume this uh, representation um, um, and ramify everywhere, then you can write that L of S um, rho pi is the trace of product of psi v on pi tensor determinant to the S. 
So it's very tempting to um, um, to put the trace to look at the trace of product of on the psi v on the whole L two of this. With some, and that would be a, a kind of sum of L function. is convergent um, when it can be proven, it can be coming for it and S. Um, well, this is used. I'm not claiming that anything is proven. But um, on the spec, as far as to the spectrum size, you understood the, the, uh, the, the, the right hand size by on the. Uh, uh, on the right hand side, the spectrum side, uh, by look of lab bit and uh, finish, I understand that they can be can be proven that this uh, converge um, up to the uh, vertical line of the triple representation, the first point of the triple representation. So it's converge. So, for example, if you just sum over all hospital representations, this will be convergent. Probably, but I don't know. Yeah, I expect it. Yes. On the on the geometric side, it is mysterious, but we do expect that have a, a geometric side actually. By the same kind of uh, very similar construction, you can I'll explain it a little bit later. In, uh, you have nice uh, modular space uh, that one can work with. Uh, so here, what what one should do with this? Right, I have this. Um, so using a trace formula, you're not working with just one function. You would like to have a whole space of test function to put the trace formula. Uh, so um, one would, um, so I, th I think the, the uh, we want to, would like to have um, a, sp a space, short space depending on rho, and um, um, and um, on every place, and this short space have. A very specific element that is a function psi v. So that re, that would replace the case, the usual case, when you have this space of function with compact support and smooth on g of f v. And so this kind of row equal to zero. And then you have this the characteristic function of k. And for every row, this I think this, uh, at least as far as I understand, that's what Bravagman and Kashan propose, and there should be this short space depending on rho with this basic function. No, no, not rho, see. Sorry? So this is rho equal to zero. This is rho equal to zero. Rho? No. The space is. Of rho is zero? No, no, but rho means. What is rho? This is some kind of short space that, can, that depending on rho. At rho, what do you mean by rho equals zero if rho is representation? Mm. If rho is a representation, what does it mean rho equals zero? That's the question. Oh, the, the trivial representation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so with this basic function, that makes sense to, to make the, the S rho. Right? Not allowed to be trivial. Because there was a condition that there was this multiplicative group that you wanted to get. Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, I just think that it, uh, I think it just should have some kind of trace formula that apply depending on rho. But I, 
Okay, so here I think there's kind of uh, uh, diverging approaches. Um, uh, there's approach by Bavman uh, uh, Kashdan and later I think pursued by Luang Lafok, who um, would like to prove the functional equation of this LS rho p by um, using the trace formula on the geometric size trace formula on this on this side, right? and so there need to be um, uh, so. The, the the geometric side of some function in this place of phi v where phi is equal to psi almost on place is a cis sky of some L function and uh, one would like to to go to the L um, one minus s rho of p dual. And here we would like to go to the space of S for the contravariant representative road check. So um, there should be uh, 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 something generalized Fourier transforms and uh, between this rock space and the equality of geometric psi would look like uh, a Poisson summation. Um, so, um, I think Laurent has uh, even candidate for for this space, if I understand correctly. So that is one proposal. So there's another prop. Well, what is this tensor product? So you have a tensor product of Schwarz space. So what is this tensor product? Sorry, can you say again? Yeah. You, you wrote the tensor product of Schwarz space. So what what is this tensor? Tensor product. Oh, uh, the tensor product makes sense because it has this function, the, the basic function. I don't know, next, next one. Uh, yeah, uh, so tensor product over V. Yes, yeah, so product over V. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And phi V is equal to psi V for almost on V. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, I mean, obviously, one does a fully transform and map psi V to the dual psi to make it consistent. Okay, so now uh, the beyond endoscopy, I mean, in teaching, in, um, in Langlands approach, he's, uh, he's not, uh, he's, at, at least originally, he's not looking at the functional equation. He was more interested in the, looking at the bones that appears in this right-hand side. And we hope that, um, uh, the, you know that in the proving functoriality is, is more or less equivalent to partitioned automorphic representation into, into different backs. Uh, back corresponds to subgroup of the dual group that receive the, uh, the Lenin's parameters. And, and in which back you want to put your representation depend on on the, the all of the pawns you get in LS row. So control the pawn that appears on the right hand side would, would tell you uh, what to put in different bags. So that is, I mean, naively, the, what would I like to do? And, and as always, you want to try to uh, use the, the geometric side with this complicated function to prove whatever you want to prove on the on spectrum side. But of course, it's, um, it's it's rather intimidating because, I mean, for the medical convergence, I mean, you can do not really know how to define this space to start with uh, at the moment. So we can say some kind of long way to go to this. But at least I think that is a reasonable proposal because at least it seems like you have a nice geometric interpretation of the, of the left hand side. So now let me uh, explain something that I've been trying to do for a uh, couple of years without much success. But <clears throat> okay, so now um, um, we have this um, uh, infinity point in C, and we also choose a, a map from GM to the center of G, uh, so that you can twist, you can twist. Uh, 
uh, G bandon by uh, divisor. Right? So every E bandon, you can do the E of infinity. Just for lab of a vector bandon, you can uh, twist by one infinity. Okay. So now uh, the quotient of, uh, of um, GA mod uh, GF infinity to the Z, the GO, now corresponding to uh, the category of, of G bandon. Uh, but then we decide that the two bandon are, we just give an isomorphism between two, these two bandon. So just think about the vector bandon. You can decide that V, you give an isomorphism with V twisted with all infinities. <coughs> now, uh, when you look at the geometric side of integral, so which is, is quite easy to guess that you, you want to look at endomorphism of, of, of vector bandon or of bandons. So we look at our space of M is a space of, um, so, so let E uh, to be an object in this, then the, the endomorphism of V, the so M endomorphisms, the M is um, the E, a V, a map from V to V and infinity, and N go to infinity. E is V, E is the same as V. Yeah, it's same as V. Uh, then you look at um, the space M is the space of uh, E and phi. And phi is just endomorphism of E. So um, this is to be, uh, you can write this to the limit, which now become E and phi, with now phi map E to E and infinities. So this look exactly like um, Hitchin vibration, and uh, you can define it. Um, uh, so that because this M N. So this, I mean, it's very similar to the Hitchin vibration. So, so map is it map is it an M map? This is M map. Okay, so, so one we want to use um, uh, so Hitchin vibration have this F to M N to A N where A N using the some kind of adjoint quotient on the monoid uh, and built from the from the adjoint quotient. M, N is this modular space of endomorphism of E bandons. No, but what is the index N? N is because I have to add the... Uh, oh, it's the same N as over there. It's this N. Uh, adjoint quotient of, of monoid. And, and you want to start to study um, the geometry of trace formula by using this uh, Hitchin vibration. Now the first point, uh, of the first issue one can meet is uh, if you put I, I mean, you have to do with IC because you cannot work with other shift, you will not very, very well. Uh, but then what would be the IC of this MN? 
right? You just put uh, the IC of this MN would be the right function. Because it's not the same as the space of XN I defined earlier. But this question seems to be uh, resolved plus ou moins by, <laughs> by Boutier. <laughs> I guess. <coughs> okay, so so now once we, um, we get this, uh, well, well, and then of course yes, very much speculation because even for each vibration, when you when you start to work with the important cone or hyperbolic space, it's a lot of problem. It's not done yet. I mean. Uh, the hyperbolic part has been uh, studied extensively and has been solved by the uh, work of Lomong and Chaudoir. But for an important cone, as far as it's not, it's not known. But you can ex at least ex expect that in the best of the case, this is completely determined. By the cohomology. of the genetic fiber. So this kind of monodromy is a so the fiber of this is called a bit of varieties. And we have to say that the answer is very complicated, but can be some recipe to, to write this answer from the representation of monodromy on the H1 of the billion varieties. And so we would think that then the cohomology of MN. That is somehow what we are interested in Fine, that is trace formula, is a somehow a kind of, should be um, a, a cohomology of bread group. I mean, in many cases, it looks like this kind of answer that is what happens. And of course, that uh, uh, hopefully, um, a beyond endoscopic conjecture of Langlands can be um, translated to the question of stability and cohomology of bread group. That has been studied a lot by, by topologists. So I mean, the bridge is not built it, but I mean, there seems to be one. OK, thank you. Thank you. Maybe we start with some questions from Tokyo, then begin, and then Paris. So you do bread group? What 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 is what is this? Okay. Okay. Um, so the map M A N to to A N. So how can I look at Takeshi? So should look at this or this? The camera is here. Okay. So the map from M N A N is um, basically a designation of billion varieties. So the basic thing you can think about is um, the, the family of, of, um, of two covering a projective curve, projective um, line, right? Uh, so, so that is determined basically by the ramification divisor. Um, then something bad can happen when, when the divisor become uh, hemantiplicities, right? But before that, the divisor become multiplicity free. You have a nice family of covering. So you have nice family of billion varieties, Jacobians. And you have representation of the fundamental group on the H1 of that billion varieties. So that is a very well-known um, representation of the bread group. That is the bread group on the H1 of billion varieties. And in that case, I think I'll prove some type of stability result when n go to infinities. Um, yeah. Uh, and, um, if you're opt optimistic enough, there should be something similar in more in a situation. Thank you. And then a further question from Tokyo? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, then, then uh, I, I'd like to ask, ask about the beyond the endoscopy. So, so you, you consider the some geometric side. So, uh, so, if we want to compare to to, to geometric side of two, two groups, 
then what, uh, which uh, kind of relations are expected for your test function psi, psi B? Can you ask? I, I, I don't understand what kind of something I, I couldn't hear well. What, what, what kind of relation? Relation. Relation. Uh, so, in endoscopic uh, case, uh, we we expect the mathematics of orbital integral, stable orbital integral. Yes. Uh, in general case, with what, with which kind of relation? is expected for? I, 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 um, I mean, he started to believe that there is, um, there is a relation between um, operant integrals itself. Uh, uh, I mean, um, in the endoscopic case, that is all, I mean, this, this guy, a very, um, I mean, wonderful case when you have a map between this short space and then they are just have small particles. Uh, uh, but um, in general, it seems to be rather a, a, um, a transforms, right? Uh, the transforms that uh, if, you, if you know all operant integrals and you know other operant integrals, just one not determined by one, but by the whole family, it, it is it kind of integral transforms. Mm. But in, in this um, bioendoscopy uh, uh, approach, uh, as far as I understand it, uh, at least we, uh, uh, it, it's not about obontogons, it's about the whole, the sum of obontogons. Uh, and more, more precisely, some asymptotic behaviors. So it, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not really reasonable to try to have any Precise answer about this cohomology, but how when n go to infinities, then there, there should be comparison between two different groups. Um, I think this is as precise as I can give as answer for for the time being. No more. Yeah, thank you. That's just what I'm talking about. So we go to Beijing. Okay, so any questions from Beijing? Just leader. Uh, so I think there's no questions from Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> there is questions from Beijing. So I have a question. Do you expect a closed form answer for this cohomology? For so, for example, if you really can see in the case of trivial row, then basically you're talking about cohomology of bungee for, the, for which there is a simple answer. Yes. So you do, do you believe in kind of similar type answer in no. general? No, no it's a L function. You cannot say another thing about L function, right? The point is much easier things. So the point is kind of asymptotic of the coefficient, right? It's like a sum of the, the MN is, I mean, in the simplest case, like you just truncate a directly series, right? You look at the sum of a n q n up to some big n and how how it grows says something about the about the bones and uh, that what we want to con con to compare different groups and that should be much easier than say about precise value of this question do you know anything or do you would you like to do anything any, i mean you're only talking about sort of so to say the spherical case here yes uh, so uh so do you know anything about smaller Compact groups. Small. I mean, if consider, uh, because for example, you mentioned the Schwartz space, which mm -hmm. should, uh, and uh, so for example, we can prove that it has the same characterization by means of Perot's sheaves if you consider the Iwakuri part. Mm -hmm. And conjecturally, it should be the same for the full Schwartz space, although they are not sure how to formulate this precisely. But at least in the Iwakuri case, you can do similar analysis. Mm -hmm. And so, the, but here you were only talking about computing the trace of some. Of, you know, one particular function, mm -hmm. which is invariant. Oh, but in principle, you have to can uh, some some place you have to put other functions. Yeah. So my question is whether you have any conjecture about what, for example, if you put some Iwahori invariant functions, other in, I mean, here you formulate some kind of vague conjecture about what this can I mean, at least uh, about um, as far as the concern with the pawns, 
it's not really important to the local information. I mean, I cannot, uh, have, I cannot formulate anything, but I think for the porn question, it's not local, it's not very relevant. Other questions? Okay, so there are no other questions. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>